Grammar. Study the set of sentences below. Try to figure out how the use of italicized word differs in each sentence. Number one, rich people travel a lot. Number two, traveling the entire day, we settled for a shabby tavern by the road. Number three, traveling is one of man's greatest pursuits. Number four, to travel the world is my ultimate dream. In the first sentence, the word travel functions as a verb. But in the succeeding sentences, it only appears in a verb form but is functioning differently. In the second sentence, it behaves as an adjective describing the subject we. In the last two sentences, it is both used as a noun. This verb form which does not function as a verb is called a verbal. A verbal is a verb form which functions as a noun, adjective, or adverb. There are three basic verbals, gerund, participle, and infinitive. Gerund is a verbal functioning as a noun. It usually ends in ing and acts as a noun like a typical noun. Gerund may also be used in the following. As a subject, reading is a healthy habit. As object of the verb, Laika enjoys reading graphic novels. As a predicate nominative or subjective complement, Laika's pastime is reading. As object of the preposition, we learned a lot from reading. As an appositive, her pastime, reading, has brought her satisfaction. Participle. When a verbal behaves as an adjective, we call it participle. It has two forms. Present participle ends in ing. Examples. Number one, the waving child bids goodbye. Number two, she looked at the crying woman beside her. Number three, the audience gave her a standing ovation. Past participle. It usually ends in ed, but may also end irregularly in t or en. Number one, the player obtained a fractured hip. Number two, we stared blankly at the broken window. Number three, in the Old Testament, people gave burnt offering to the Lord. Let's practice. Identify the participle in each sentence and tell whether it is present or past. Number one, relieved, the woman finally smiled. The participle is relieved. It is a past participle. Number two, Kirby is complaining about his swollen knee. The participle is swollen, and it is a past participle. Number three, pouring rain kept us all in the house. The participle is pouring. It is a present participle. You have already learned that verbal functions in a number of ways such as noun and adjective. In this section, we'll further learn a distinct kind of verbal that behaves in more than one way. Infinitive. It may function as a noun, adjective, or adverb. It is usually preceded by the word to. First, it may act as a noun. Examples. As a subject. To become a soldier is his ambition. As a predicate nominative. His ambition is to become a soldier. As a direct object. He wants to become a soldier. Next. As an adjective, it also modifies a noun or a pronoun. His determination to become a soldier will soon pay off. It modifies the noun determination. Next, as an adverb, it modifies a verb, an adjective, or another adverb. He trains hard to become a soldier. Let's practice. Point out the infinitive in each sentence and identify how it functions in the sentence. As a noun, adjective, or adverb. Number one, to serve God is my vocation. To serve, used as a noun. Number two, we finally went to work. To work, as an adjective. Number three, Miss Jane is the one to ask about incoming documents. To ask, as a noun. Number four, she's willing to take another project. To take, as an adverb. Number five, it is important to heed your teacher's instructions. To heed as a noun. Let's practice. Identify whether the underlined words in each sentence is or are a verbal or a verb. Number one, listening to music relaxes my mind. 
listening is used as a verbal. Number two, the window pane was broken. Broken is a verbal. Number three, to err is human. To err is a verbal. Number four, the young man assisted the old lady in crossing the street. Assisted here is a verb. Number five. The artist left splattered paint all over the floor. Splattered here is a verbal. Thank you for listening. See you next time.